this uh, comment up here because I have a question for you here, Jordan. Yeah. I've, and I've heard this from multiple fans. They say Lane will Lane Kiffin, he would leave after two or three years for a bigger job. And people feel that Mario, if he found success at Miami, he wouldn't necessarily just look to leave. What, what do you feel about that? I vehemently disagree with that sentiment about Lane Kiffin. Um, as I said earlier, context is everything. So let's mm -hmm. look at the context of his jobs, okay? Um, two years at the Oakland Raiders, okay? Youngest coach in NFL history, clearly in over his head, he was fired. So not his choice, right? Yeah. Then he goes to Tennessee. He does two years, and he leaves. Now, this is, this is the one job where I think there's somewhat of an argument. He leaves for USC after two years in, in, uh, uh, in Tennessee. But, I mean, if you look at his coaching record, like he had been at USC for – a decade, you know, as a grad assistant, working his way up to wide receivers, coach, offensive coordinator, you know, all this stuff. Right. So he had his ties. I mean, that would be like saying Mario, you know, leaving Oregon for Miami is a, you know, like it's that same situation, right? Yeah. Like USC is where Lane Kiffin cut his teeth. Yes. So he goes there, he gets fired after two seasons or three seasons or whatever. Okay, so again, not his choice to relocate. He goes to Alabama, offensive coordinator, wins a national championship, and then he takes a head coaching job. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. Coordinator to head coach, no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's successful at FAU, gets an SEC job. What guy on planet Earth wouldn't jump from FAU to Ole Miss? Like, so that's my argument, is that yeah. every move that he has made besides maybe – I mean, even the Tennessee to USC one, that's a little bit less. Every move is logical. It yeah. makes sense. Like, yeah. uh, I, you know, most of the time he didn't have a choice whether he was there longer than two years. Other ones, it was a no-brainer that everyone would do. They're smart career moves. Yeah. So, you know, the report was that Lane sees Miami as a destination job where he can win rings. You know, he can get a squad of guys together and he can go play Nick Saban in the playoffs. OK, if he can make that a reality, there's no reason for him to leave because yeah. you got to look at, at Ole Miss. So any given year, he's playing Auburn. He's yeah. playing LSU. He's playing Alabama. He's playing Texas A&M and he's playing Mississippi State. Mike Leach, yeah. not a bad coach. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Arkansas, Sam Pittman. Yeah, and they're on the come up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Lane is looking at like the variation between third to fifth almost every year in his yeah. division, not his conference, his division. Okay. Whereas if he jumps ship to Miami, it's an open road, man. I mean, he has to worry about Pat Narduzzi every year and Dave Dern or whatever his name is at NC state. Like I guess they're on the other side, huh? So he just has to worry about Narduzzi and Bronco Mendenhall every year. <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I don't think Lane Kiffin, I mean, maybe he'd bolt for, Alabama or an NFL job, sure, but that goes back to that's a that's a job that or that's a move that almost anyone makes. Are you going to tell me that Mario wins a national championship here and then Al Alabama drops their very best offer on him? What do we think happens? Yeah, I mean, you're going to get paid if you win big. Yeah, but but that's my honest question for anyone that thinks Lane will leave. What happens when Nick Saban retires and they offer Mario the job, if that happens? Oh, so you're saying like uh, if Mario ended up being our coach and then Nick Saban retires and, and yep. in the midst of that, they go after Cristobal? Yep. Yeah, what happens? I mean, dude, it's – here's my thing, man, is that until we're going to be a school who's going to spend the money that it takes to be a top team yearly, we have to really truly consider that good coaches will leave after a couple of years when they get better offers. And I can't knock a coach for wanting to go get paid more money somewhere else. I, I can't yep. do it. Having success at Miami is, I mean, it, it's flash and glamour and glitz. And uh, it, you can make things happen so quick in Miami. You can get hype developed or you can squash the hype that fast. Yeah, well, I, 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 would, I would hate to have to go to a bidding war against an SEC team for, yeah. for Mario Cristobal. We're not winning that kind of battle. I'll, I'll tell you what, though, and, and I genuinely believe this definitively, okay? If – if the administration actually puts their money where their mouth is and they do what they're promising, okay, we're putting tens of millions of dollars into the program every year. We're getting more booster money now. 
you know, we're just, we're establishing the right infrastructure and we make a good hire or two at coach. If we start winning, if we start contending for the playoffs, you can, I, I refuse to believe that there is any more than two jobs that will always be better than Miami. If, if we're competing at the highest level, we're as good as any other job. Uh, I mean, there's only two jobs that will always be better, and it's Ohio State and Alabama, you know? Because if we're winning in Texas, is I mean, Texas is a wild card, right, because of all their money. But, but you get the sentiment of what I'm saying is that if we, if we are playing like we did in the 80s, <laughs> the only jobs that are going to be better is Ohio State and Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and on top of that, NFL gigs, of course, too. You know, I mean, if you – I'll tell you what, man. The coach comes into Miami and he truly fixes it, bro. I mean, like I'm talking like truly fixes yeah. our issues and makes us genuinely competitive year after year after year. He's going to get offers. He's going to get looks because yeah. here's the thing is that they'll know that he developed some incredible relationships in Miami, in yeah. Dade County. And that, that'd be something that SEC teams would want to take with them because they know that he could use that for recruiting. So, you know, coming to Miami, I, I mean, I would still say Cristobal would stick around longer than Lane Kiffin would, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, dude, it, it, it's it, – It certainly plays a factor. But, but I think if you're doing your analysis and you were saying like, hey, you know, we made our pros and cons list and Lane came out number one. It's a close number one. But we're going to go with Mario, even though he's number two, because we think he'll stick around longer. I don't think you do that. That's just not smart. Because anything could happen, you know? I mean, maybe Saban – I mean, isn't he like 65 or something like that? Yeah, he's not young. Yeah. I mean, what happens if he retires, you know, four years into Mario's tenure and then he gets the offer? Like, you know, I, I just think it would be – I, I agree that Mario would be less likely to leave Miami. But, I mean, at the same time, like, Lane has been all over the country, okay? He's coached in California. He's coached in Tennessee. He's coached in South Florida. He's coached in, the, in you know, the Deep South now. And he still owns his house in Boca Raton, and he's actively campaigning for the job in South Florida. It seems like he has decided that that is where he wants to be. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. I mean, is there really a difference? Because I, mean, <clears throat> I think there's a there's a difference in the way that they coach, basically. I mean, the, Lane Kiffin and Mario are two different guys completely. So yeah. it, it's about, you know, th that mindset working at Miami and working at it consistently for year after year after year. There'll be players, though, that will love to play for Lane because he's flashy. He likes to be a little, you know, but boisterous sometimes you know he likes to yeah. pump his pump his chest out and uh seem like he's one of the best coaches in the in the entire ncaa but yeah um it, it's it's tough man lane kiffin's had his issues bro he's had a lot of issues yeah. and uh i you just got to hope that he's past that you got to hope that he's learned right yeah. i mean that's all you can ask from any coach yeah well but one thing i think people forget because lane kiffin has been part of your daily espn coverage uh for 15 years now uh, I think one thing that people are forgetting is that he is like eight months younger than Manny Diaz or something like that. He's only 46. Yeah. He's younger than Manny Diaz. So like Lane, Lane is not a finished product, yeah. which is crazy to think that. <clears throat> well, I mean, it seems he, like he's been around forever. Yeah. I mean, he got, uh, let's see, 14 years ago, he'd have been 32 when the Ravens hired him from being, or sorry, the Raiders hired him, and he was only an offensive coordinator in college, right? So when people bring that stuff up, it's like, dude, a 32-year-old getting his first head coaching experience in the National Football League, like, are we really going to hold that against the guy? <laughs> you know, like, what, what was he supposed to do, say no? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's tough, dude. I mean, yeah, he got an opportunity that guys his age don't get, so I, why not take it, you know? Because yeah. think about it. Had he actually been ready at that time and could have been almost like a uh, a young phenom, a young prodigy in the scene, yep. dude, they might be talking about some special stuff. Seriously, yeah. they, you know, they might be. But unfortunately for him, you know, the bumps and bruises happened, and 
it seems like he's carried himself a little better since he's in the SEC now, though. You know, I, I, it doesn't seem like he's really trying to make trouble like he used yeah. to. He used to, like, almost want to make trouble just to make yeah. trouble. But he – I don't see him really being like that. Unless something's happened I'm not aware of. But he seems yeah. to yeah. seems to have kind of chilled out a little bit. I don't know if he's humbled. But, you know, the SEC stuff, maybe Saban beating him, you know, kind of humbled him. I don't know. Yeah, and – I, I agree that there's been some maturity, but I actually think his bravado fits the University of Miami. You know, I mean, the, the SEC is kind of a good old boys club. You know, it's like oh, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a false sense of uh, being a gentleman when, you know, when you're an SEC coach, right? Because they all, they all play dirty, you know. They all they all uh, cheat and do anything they can to win, but there's, you know, there, there's some sense of like, being a gentleman on the surface and Lane doesn't fit that, but you know what he does fit is exactly what the bad boy Miami hurricanes have always done. Yeah. yeah. You know, can we, one of my things, I guess, Jordan is, is that I've been saying, I've said this many times. I don't want to live in the past anymore with Miami. I don't really want to recreate what we had back then. That won't happen again. The yeah. ch- football's changed. It completely changed. We need a new identity. Miami University of Miami needs a new identity is Lane Kiffin the type of guy that can truly fulfill something like that it's a big it's a big thing to ask for yeah well I I think that's the right question but if you're if you're comparing Mario versus Lane um and you're looking for a new identity I think Lane is the type of guy that could add an adjacent identity you know it's 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 new but it's not a stark it's not um, opposition, right? It's yeah. it's not an opposing identity. It's yeah. an adjacent identity. Yes, it's exactly. different. It's new. It's the spread, fast-paced offense, right? It's scoring seventy points on people. Yeah, um, and it's having fun doing it, right? It, and and it's it's kind of the new, it's the new swag, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not I mean, swag much, like the recruits 80s. would love to see that, right? I mean, think about yeah. the local recruits. Yeah. Being being able to go, hey man, I don't have to leave the area anymore. Look at this offense they got at Miami. Like, yeah. dude, I mean, I I just want something to work, bro. Like, I'm just I just want something to work. Yeah, and I I feel like that's that's kind of the the attitude that radiates from from South Florida in terms of like just being in your face, you know. Especially especially when there's success, it, it's all about like, hey, I just beat you because I'm better than you, you know. And I think. I think Lane does that in a different modern way that could work. Whereas if we want a new identity, like, well, let's, let's have this conversation about Mario Cristobal too. If we're looking for something new, does hiring Alonzo Highsmith and Mario Cristobal really give us anything new? I mean, it it gives us something better, I think. Uh, Yeah. I'm not arguing with you there. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just, um, you know, toying with the idea of looking for a new identity. Like, are we living in the past if we go High Smith and Cristobal? I don't think. I mean, because Cristobal is it seems to be a guy who's adapted pretty well to, uh-huh. to the new NCA, and especially being at a place like Oregon where he needed to really, um, really make it seem like that was a place to go for five stars and four stars and all that kind of stuff. Because they've got that Nike backing right there. He really needed. He needed to make sure that that happened, and he did, man. He's, he kills it on the recruiting trail. He absolutely yeah, yeah. does. He is. He's elite. Yeah, he, he, he does, man. I, I, yeah, I hate yeah. that he's got his mishaps, you know, yeah, in yeah. coaching. It sucks because if he didn't, we'd be talking about the absolute perfect candidate. We literally yeah, yeah. would. But yeah, yeah. there's still some questions about him, though. There, there is. There's genuine questions about every coach for the most part because we're not going after yeah, a title-winning yeah. coach yet. We don't have that. We don't have that swagger money. I'll tell you what, though, we need to strike while the iron is hot, because right now we are the hottest job in the country, and it's not even open yet. Yeah, oh, but, a lot of buzz. But um, so LSU is open, USC is open. There's a chance Oklahoma could open up. Yeah, Washington is open. Texas, maybe. Texas might open up. Auburn might open up. That's something people don't talk about a lot. Oh, but, uh, I think about that. Yeah, there's that issue. Brian Harson is is having that issue with the administration. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone has said whether or not he did comply with their vaccination mandate, but I know the deadline is December fourth, and he has been shrugging all questions in that. You know, it's just like we're not talking about this. You know, so there's a there's 
a legitimate chance that Auburn could open up too. Um, you know, and and uh, where does that put us though? Then I mean, if all those jobs are open and we don't strike while the iron's hot, where does that leave us trying to compete for coaches we want? It just depends on how the dominoes fall, man. Because you know, I I could see Brian Harson ending up in Washington. I mean, he might have those same type of issues. Um, you know, up, and I don't want to get into that too much, but but you know, I mean, he he seems like a fit up there, you know, because he coached in Boise, played in Boise, all yeah, that stuff. Guy. Like he's that Pacific Northwest guy, yeah. um, you know. So so that could be something like that. But but there's so many jobs that are going to be open. Florida might be open. Yep. Like we're not even talking about that. They lost today, dude. They're five and six. Yep. Yep. Florida, so, I I bet Florida does open. 